Hello, I'm Inyo Zalea and I'm kind of like James Bond. Don't believe me? I'll show you. So right here I have my very expensive Rolex and it's kind of like a gadget. If I press just the right button, it will drive my car right over here. So let's do that. Self-destruction activated. Oh, that Five, was a wrong button. Four, three. Come on. Two, one. Apparently it explodes. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to create that explosion that you just saw in the description. We are going to use an explosion here. Uh, let me preview it once more so you can see how it looks like uh, again. So uh, right now it's RAM previewing. There we go. Here we have a preview looking pretty cool. And we are going to use the Action VFX pack. It's from uh, Rody Polis, and he actually made a Kickstarter out of it. It's still going on, so it's three days left to go. So make sure you check it out. And also, uh, you can download a free explosion of 2K resolution. So this pack goes up to 4K, but he allowed us to uh, download a free explosion. And yeah, I could already make my tutorial right now, so you get to see uh, the project in action. So uh, make sure to check out the video. It's a really great. Uh, package so uh, if you want to benefit make sure you bag this project um, so I'm going to click this away and you and the link will be in the description if you want to check it out and in the video right here so um, also I will make a pack of my own so you can download the footage and a few other assets that we'll need for this tutorial uh, you can also find that in the description below. So uh, first of all, you'll need is footage. And yeah, you can download the footage uh, in the description, like I said. So you can drag and drop this right over here. And then just, yeah, see an example of what it looks like. So there we go. So we have this footage and it's handheld. So it's it's moving a bit and we'll have to track that movement down. The first thing we want to do is right click over here, go to new and also add a null object. Let's rename that null object by hitting the return key on the keyboard and naming it, naming it tracker. Then we're going to click on our footage again and we will make sure that our scrubber is at the beginning of our timeline and then let's open the tracker. If you don't see this, go to window um, tracker over here and let's track the motion. So that's a 2D tracker and you will see this pop up. So let's drag this to a leaf on the ground. So let's let's see over here. Um, it's going to track this all right, I, I guess, and make the outer square a little bit bigger. So it has a little bit more uh, place to analyze from and also enable the rotation right over here and move that more to the right maybe. Uh, so they're spaced out and they can analyze the uh, rotation for that uh, particular tracking. So uh, as your time uh, timeline scrubber is at the beginning, we can just play, um, we can just hit play right over here. So analyze forward and it will analyze our footage. And as quickly as it goes, it's going to be quite perfect. So uh, we can see that it's analyzing this perfectly. And then we just need to hit edit target. And we can see that the tracker is already selected because we created that null before we analyzed the footage. And then just hit apply and apply to the X and Y. Click OK. So now we can drop these two down and we can see that we have a null object that stays in place just like so. OK. So we're halfway done. Uh, next is to check on here. So you can see I'm working with 32 bits instead of eight, uh, like you would probably do. And that has a reason. So also the uh, color space is sRGB and uh, linearized working space is checked. What that will do, um, yeah, just look it up on the internet, what it actually does. It's going to be a little bit too complicated to explain it in this tutorial, but I will show you the difference of doing this and not doing this. So. Let's click OK. So uh, you can see it's daylight and using fire stock footage in daylight can be tricky, especially if, well, let's say, if we're going to make this 8-bit again and we're going to uh, insert our example here. OK, so we can see the background is black, so we'll have to change the mode and you can toggle the switches if you don't see that, but we have to uh, change the mode to screen. And you can see it doesn't look too realistic. So if we would change uh, that to a linearized workspace, it will, will look already a lot better. Still, we have to do a few um, 
changes but if we change these settings and we click OK we will see that it will fit it will it will fit a little bit better in our footage so uh, the next thing to do is pick the uh, pick the pan behind tool here and move the center of our explosion to the beginning of the explosion right over here so now we can scale it up uh, accordingly to the explosion so um, we want to move this explosion somewhere in our in our uh, shot so I would make sure it's it's quite close to the null object here and then I'm going to pick with it with the tracker here so now it's parent is the tracker and it's going to move with the explosion you can see uh, it, it stays nicely in place okay so we will duplicate this explosion three times okay and we'll just enable two of these so this one will change the mode back to normal and the reason why is because right now if we'll see and scrub through the time uh, because it's on screen and the explosion has some black parts in it you will see here it has uh, well yeah some cutouts and that's not very realistic so we're going to use a normal very quick mask uh, on the normal to fix that so I'm going to make a mask like so very rough it doesn't have to be exact then I'm going to press P on uh, M on the keyboard and click on the stopwatch for mask path I'm also going to press F on the keyboard to uh, add a little bit more feathers so it dissolves a little bit better like so and then I'm going to press U on the keyboard to reveal my keyframe again and I'll move back into time so right over here and let's move our mask Okay, so we can start this layer from here, so let's shorten it down and then just go frame by frame very quickly because an explosion goes very quickly, we're not going to lose too much time doing this, but it's going to make it look a lot better, so it's really worth of doing uh, just a few manual keyframes like so. Okay, so there we go. We have our explosion with the black parts in the fire. So if you would see the difference, you'll see that it looks a lot better with that quick mask. Okay, so we have our normal here and we will we will add an other layer here. So uh, let's solo the screen mode here. And now we have our effect quite quite well but we will also add some glow and to do that we are going to make another explosion here so also enable that and solo it as well with the other layers and change the mode to add so right away it's going to look a little bit more intense but we're also going to go to effect uh, stylize and add a glow uh, right here and change the glow intensity to 0.5 change the threshold to 30 I guess and let's say a radius of 25 uh, maybe the threshold back to 45 and duplicate that glow effect by hitting ctrl D on the keyboard and enhance that radius by 500 and also change the glow intensity to 0.3 and change the threshold to 60 or so also change it back to 60 over here so now we will see that it's it's very red but the glow is going to make it look a little bit better um, we can change the reds um, with a simple tint here so uh, if we if we go back to that layer so click on the layer go to effect color correction tint and let's change it to like 30 percent okay there we go and if we'll play this back we will already have a good looking explosion so what you can also do is uh, link all of these well all these explosions to each other so we have one explosion that is linked to the tracker and let's put these two explosions under the this explosion so pick with it with this explosion and the reason being is if you're going to click on this explosion and you're going to scale it up everything is going to scale with it so you can just decide how large you want your explosion to look so now it's a bigger explosion Okay, so let's de-solo everything because we have uh, gone over everything. So now we have just one solo, uh, well, we have now one composition with this fire. And we will also check the beginning. So we have some fire here at the beginning. We just want one big blast instantly. So let's trim these down right over here. Boom. Okay, we have our explosion already. Uh, so the next thing we, we need to do is add some ground uh, damage. So I have two files that you can find in the description. Uh, and that's a explosion scar so if you drag and drop this in here and we will make it larger 
we can also toggle the switch, uh, switches and make it a 3D layer and then go to the rotation tool and rotate it like so. Move it down, pressing V on the keyboard to select our move tool and just move it on the right position. So uh, also scale it up again a little bit more if you want to and also parent it to the null. So it's very simple, uh, just a little bit of time consuming. Uh, so then click on the toggle switches again and change the mode to multiply and maybe uh, also add some uh, of the explosion hole here. So it's uh, just a simple image I found. Uh, you can also drag and drop this into the tracker. Also go to uh, make it a 3D layer as I did with the explosion and copy the, explo uh, the position of the explosion. So copy it, control C, control V and also go to the rotation, the orientation. We're also going to copy that control C and on the other layer control V. So now we have pasted it down and uh, we will make this a little bit uh, smaller so click on the hole press S on the keyboard to reveal the scale make it a little bit smaller like so go to the mask tool right over here go and click on the ellip uh, ellipse tool double click the ellipse press uh, MM on the keyboard and that's well once more uh, and that's going to reveal all of the effects you can apply to that mask. So we will um, make the expansion smaller. So let's drag it down and you will see that the mask is becoming smaller over here. And also increase the feather uh, enough like so and make it smaller, smaller, smaller. Uh, and there we go. And then one more thing we will need to do is click on the explosion hole again. Go to effect, color correction, hue and saturation change the uh, channel control to green and make the selection here a little bit wider by dragging these things a little bit wider like so and desaturate it by much uh, let's say let's say minus 75 and also the light uh, lighting uh, the lightness uh, to minus 75 or so so now if we are going to play this back we will see our scar is instantly there so we need it to be after the explosion so the explosion is over here uh, so let's trim this down to there. So if you're going to play it back, it's a little bit too late, so it should be right over here. Okay. And right now it's it's very obvious that it's instantly there, uh, but we'll need some uh, screen shake to solve this problem. So let's put it a little bit more to that position. Okay, so that's... Uh, I'm going to select everything and toggle every effect down so we can get an overview of our composition and this is our explosion now. So let's select all of the layers, go to layer, pre-compose everything and we're going to name this explosion uh, raw for example. And now what we want to do is go to the effects and presets and search for screen shake. Uh, well, just shake and then I'll find my screen shake preset. You can see it's a user preset. I made it myself. I already made a tutorial on how to create this exact preset. So if you want to know how I did it, uh, just check out that tutorial. So I'll drag and drop this onto my footage. And the only thing I need to do is go to the beginning of the explosion that's right over here. Uh, well, one, one back and click on these stopwatch uh, keyframes and press U on the keyboard to reveal the, these effects. Go one frame forward, so by pressing page down, uh, you will move one frame, and you can change the frequency to let's say 10, and the amplitude to let's say 85, and then like two frames further, we'll change the amplitude to 50, and then we'll go all the way to the end and change the frequency to zero and the amplitude to zero, and let's see how that looks like. Okay, so let's preview this. We can see some shake here, but it's a little bit too fast after the explosion. So we'll change the frequency to one over here. So very quick and uh, one very quick uh, shake here. So let's say we need this to be 150. We have one very big shake. And also click on these uh, motion blur over here and also for the composition that's going to um, yeah make it look a little bit more realistic. So let's see how this looks like. It's a little bit too much 150 so let's change to 100 okay so let's drag this frequency also to the left 
and let's change the amplitude to 75 and uh, maybe the frequency to 8 so it's a little bit of play time but um, yeah you have to make sure that it works that it looks quite quite realistic so right now it's a little bit too much but I just wanted to show you uh, so you can see um, the difference between shake or no shake so uh, this is coming close uh, maybe we change the amplitude to 50 and this one to 30 okay so this is a lot better okay so one more thing you could do is get back into our composition and right at the beginning of our explosion so let's say over here so when it's getting intense we can right click and create a new solid we can create a um, kind of yellowish um, very light color and click OK then deselect that layer and mask it out here so let's say um, from here all the way uh, up here and there we go and press uh, M on the keyboard and well F on the keyboard to uh, feather it out and also enable it back uh, like so so feather it out a bit and change the toggle switches and change the mode to add here and also decrease the opacity by a bit and uh, then drop it down to our example here and uh, well right over here uh, over our uh, scars just below our explosions also keyframe the opacity go back one frame make sure the opacity is one uh, is zero percent so ten percent and all the way up here and then move a few frames forward and make it zero out so uh, if we preview this it's going to give a uh, small reflection to everything around it and surroundings it's daylight so you, you won't see too much reflections but if you would do this in a night shot it's going to uh, look a lot more well it's it's going to be more obvious you can also right click and create a new adjustment layer and go to effect color correction and add a photo filter and then we can also trim this down to the beginning of our explosion so that's right over here yeah okay we have a warmer color to our screen also until here let's press T on the keyboard and create a new stopwatch for this also move forward and zero this out again so if we preview this we will see that it's going to look a little bit warmer and it's it's going to make it look a lot better if you would check it out with the screen shake uh, like so you'll see that it's looking a lot better uh, than with the warmness and the reflections of it it's going to look a little bit more realistic I hope you liked this tutorial and if you did thumbs up and if you have any questions in the comments below also subscribe to the channel uh, if you want to see more and also check out the channel if you didn't already I have a lot of tutorials and yeah I hope you liked it thanks for watching goodbye